So I am giving a talk here today, uh, and I'd obviously like to acknowledge my co-authors, particularly Dave and Cecilia Latham, who did the majority of the work on this, uh, on this particular analysis. Um, what I want to share with you today is a little bit about wolves, deer, and beaver, and the implications of a complex predator-prey interaction, uh, including season, for caribou, woodland caribou declines. So we know that woodland caribou are declining in northeastern Alberta, and we know that predation, primarily by wolves, has been identified as the proximate cause. That's been pretty clear and, and laid out for not only populations in, in northeastern Alberta, but several populations in, uh, in BC as well. But caribou and wolves have uh, coexisted and persisted on the landscape together for an awfully long time. And historically, we see that spatial separation so the, is, is the reason for that persistence. The idea is that wolves that occur at fairly uh, low densities on the landscape, or at least low compared to what they are now, and moose um, are, tend to use one habitat type, mostly the uplands, whereas caribou separate themselves into the, uh, the peatland habitat types. Recently, however, we've seen some major changes in the system. So we've got uh, a fairly substantial increase in white-tailed deer from the 90s to the 2000s here. So 11-fold increase in white-tailed deer. And uh, the changes in moose are small, but there's been a slight potential increase there. But this is the big one. So we've got invasion of white-tailed deer into the system. And in response to that, we see that, uh, that the wolf population has increased. In the 1970s, it was about six wolves per thousand square kilometers. And then Dave's work showed that uh, by the 2000s, we had 11 wolves per thousand square kilometers. So a pretty substantial increase. And we also know uh, from some previous work, there's been some speculation that caribou are unlikely to persist when wolf populations are or rather, when wolf populations exceed 6.5 per thousand square kilometers. So clearly, we have a potential problem here. But we also know that uh, deer, like moose, use these upland habitats. So what about spatial separation? You've got, you've got more wolves on the landscape, but uh, this was also confirmed by some recent work by, by Wasser et al. last year. You really have wolves and deer and moose coexisting in this upland habitat, and you've still got caribou, minor component of wolf diet, out here in the peatland habitats. Well, one thing we thought might be important was the effect of season. We've seen this in a bunch of papers recently. Some work out of Yellowstone from Matthew Metz showed quite clearly that the wolves there change their predatory behavior um, summer and winter. I did some research in West Central Alberta on cougars and we found very, very strong effects of season on the predatory patterns of cougars. So we thought we would look at that in this system and see if it had any effect on spatial separation. We do know from Dave's, uh, Dave's thesis that between the work done in the 1990s and the work done in the 2000s that we had more wolf GPS locations in those peatland habitats, but we didn't know what was driving that. So we studied uh, wolves in particular, but also caribou, moose, and deer, and beavers on the west side of the Athabasca River in Alberta. We had uh, eight GPS collared wolf packs. We evaluated wolf diet seasonally using scat analysis, so following the wolf packs around and picking up their scat so we knew which packs the scats could be attributed to, so that's how we figured out diet. Um, we also developed seasonal resource selection functions for deer, moose, caribou, and a static annual resource selection function for beaver. The, uh, the seasonal RSFs for, for the ungulates were developed in the winter based on aerial survey data, and in summer based on uh, pellet group transects. And the, uh, the beavers were static because they're associated very closely with their lodges, and um, so we used a lodge survey, an aerial lodge survey, to develop an RSF for beavers. And we also developed, using GPS collar data, a seasonal wolf resource selection function. 
And in addition to that, we use data from mortality of 42 radio collared adult female caribou. So we're looking at the locations and the timing of these mortalities. And we broke our whole study down into two seasons, winter, October to March, and summer, April through September. Okay, so what did we find? Well, wolf diet does vary substantially by season. During winter, they're mostly eating deer. Moose are a very important component of the biomass of wolf diet, but a less important by uh, number of prey. But we see here that deer are equally important on biomass and far more often killed. During summer, moose, again, are still very important on the biomass front, but we have fewer deer and an awful lot more beaver in the diet, particularly by percent occurrence. We've got high frequencies of beaver in the summertime. How does this translate into where wolves, beavers, moose, and deer are on the landscape? Well, here's your, our resource selection function map. Uh, well, not a map, rather. It's a graph comparing on the y-axis the probability of prey selection on the landscape, and on the x-axis the relative probability of, oh, excuse me, backwards, the relative probability of winter prey resource selection on the x-axis and wolves on the y-axis. So as the relative probability of caribou occurrence or selection increases on the landscape, we see that the probability of wolf selection is very low during winter. Now look here during summer, we still see the same general pattern, but the relationship is broken down somewhat. So we see higher probabilities of, of uh, caribou selection at higher probabilities of wolf selection. So we're seeing more overlap. <laughs> And looking at it a different way, we broke the resource selection function for caribou down into five categories and then just overlaid the wolf GPS locations on those data. And what you see here is that uh, there's about a 20% change between seasons. This is winter and summer. And so you've got a decrease in the amount of use of these lowest uh, caribou habitat classes and more wolf use in some of the medium to higher caribou classes. Interestingly, in the very highest caribou selection class, wolf use is very low regardless of season. So what happens when we look at caribou mortality? Well, 60% of the caribou and wolf scat occurred during summertime. So uh, that was based on our cutoffs. If we extended our cutoff just slightly into October, that number jumped to 90%. So most caribou are being eaten by wolves in summer relative to winter. And when you look at the mortalities of the radio collared uh, caribou, most of them, 76%, occur during our definition of summer. So what does all this mean? Well, we've got a deer invasion, prey enrichment. That's resulted in an awful lot more wolves on the landscape. Season clearly has extremely important implications for wolf caribou dynamics. In the winter, they focus on deer, and we see a very high spatial separation between caribou and wolves. In the summer, interestingly, this focus on beaver seems to pull wolves out into places that caribou also like to be in. We see a reduction in that spatial separation. Now, beaver have also occurred on this landscape um, for a very long time, but uh, during the trapping years, beaver reduced substantially, and it may be that they're recovering more now, and that's changing this relationship a little bit, say, from the early 90s to now. We're not 100% sure, but what we do know is that beaver is an important part of this predator-prey dynamic. Most caribou are killed by wolves during summer, so again, we're seeing this effect season. Caribou remain universally unimportant in wolf diet, but the proportion of caribou still has increased 10 22-fold depending on the study. So in Dave's work, it was a 10-fold increase from the James work in the early 90s. And if you look at the uh, winter Wasser results, you see a 22-fold increase from the proportion of caribou in the diet in the early 90s. So again, this is a lot of, uh, of strong evidence that, that predation is the thing that really has changed on this landscape. And again, beaver are an important driver of this incidental predation. And they are a major cause of the breakdown in spatial separation in the system. So the implications of this, we should all be considering season um, when we consider large mammal predator-prey interactions. And very often, particularly with studies of wolves, we do our research in winter. It's easier, you can snow track wolves in winter, you can find kills in winter, so we focus a lot on winter predation. But 
if we miss out on that summer component we write and we might really mess up our predictions related to the systems and to care for conservation so single season studies may produce inaccurate inference um, restoring wolf caribou dynamics through habitat protection and restoration is obviously a key to the long-term conservation of caribou we all know that but when we're thinking about how we're going to restore these landscapes we need to consider uh, these very large scale and very complex predator prey interactions that are going on so conserving pockets or pieces of caribou <coughs> habitat without considering how adjacent pieces may be affecting these these large-scale predator prey dynamics um, may not be effective and again because we've got this changed system we've got a breakdown in spatial separation we've got more wolves on the landscape we've got more deer on the landscape in the short term I mean we need to be implementing all of these um, long-term strategies with with respect to habitat but in the short term we need to work on managing this predator prey system in order to conserve caribou